Hello YouTube, it's Marcus and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we go over a how-to tutorial to make your very own custom Akedo Warrior. In this case, we're talking about the rare, legendary Bruce Lee. We're gonna go over the tools you need, the characters, and the process on how to make your own very custom character. And at the end of the video, listen in for details on how you can win this special giveaway. We'll be giving away this Bruce Lee Custom Akedo with different stats than the original Chuck Slee. Just like what Bruce Lee always said, be like water. And that's why his element is water on this one. For low cost of four, plus one damage against lightning, he becomes a formidable 5-5. Five five. So, what are the pieces that we'll need? Of course, we need a Chuck Slee, the OG, main character and sidekick of our protagonist, Jet, from the Kato OAV series. Make sure you stay tuned and uh, hit notifications on YouTube to make sure you know when the next latest episode of series, uh, season two, comes out. So we're going to combine Chuck Slee and Mr. Splits. Of course, you can probably use any punching arm, but I found that Mr. Splits is the one that looks the most human, as it were. We can definitely get rid of these little bumps and we'll show you how to do it. And as you can see, I've been practicing this craft for a while. This is the first prototype of Bruce Lee. Kind of got rid of the bumps of Mr. Splits' arm, but it still does look a little bit large and bulbous. The second iteration made some improvements, but as you can see, <laughs> We played quite a lot with this one that the paints start chipping. I had to figure out a, sec a second way uh, to make sure that we can protect the paint on this one. And of course, the latest one, the one we made for this video, right here. So, let's visit my workshop and take a look at the tools we need to make your very own Bruce Lee. Here's our workstation. Over here, we're gonna highlight some of the tools we use to make custom Akedos, and in this case, Bruce Lee. We have specific paints, top coats, brushes, spare parts, as well as cutting tools we use to help mold and cut some of our Akedos to make them easier to manipulate. In this case, our biggest tool is this Dremel, just from a local hardware store. Now, mine's not corded. It is running on a, a rechargeable battery pack to allow me to, uh, uh, handle it uh, with uh, my hands a little bit easier and because it's not corded though It does not have all the power that a corded version might have Inside these are the Dremel tools we use uh, to help cut some of the uh, metal parts which we will have uh, Right here, but also some plastic parts as well. So we use different cutting discs Always make sure you have some uh, safety goggles as well to protect your eyes and here's a uh, primed uh, glitch blade that we'll actually be using for a special character in the future. We'll have to stay tuned to see what this guy's gonna become. We do use uh, Tester's paint, as well as Tester products for the top coat, a gloss version, as well as a, a dull coat to make it less shiny. And of course, paint thinner, and maybe you want to uh, remove some paint, maybe you made a mistake. We are using some aerosols as well, a rust -Oleum clear coat, which I found is the best way to seal the paints uh, without it uh, bleeding or running, uh, which I have uh, found to be a necessary uh, a step uh, to finish off your Kato's. And we have a wide array of colors that we use uh, Tester brand, uh, which is an enamel paint. We actually use this one to make our own fake storm strike. We have a lot of spare brushes uh, that are used and because they're enamels, I try not to uh, clean them off too much and we just let the, the young kids just use the same brushes with the varying colors. I do have some uh, new brushes here for some fine detail work, as well as uh, some X-Acto blades uh, for some very fine lines. Uh, to separate the paint so we're not constantly dipping the paint brushes inside, we have these little Petri dishes that I found at a surplus art store. Uh, you can probably find some of these uh, almost like they're uh, can supposed to maybe hold some delicate coins, but we use these to hold the paints. Uh, spare and broken parts, we did allow some of uh, the kids to paint uh, their own special characters, like we have a ice version of Hayashi, um, but also a uh, ill-repaired Tonka with his arms broken, so 
we're gonna try to you know take off uh, the coin base and maybe use him from make to make a really strong uh, Akato fighter with nine HP and four damage but a heavy cost of nine might uh, make you think twice about using this power so we also have uh, super glue to help us uh, uh, glue the special parts or arms that we need to and some extra techniques to make sure they're more secure not a necessary step but uh, something you might want to pay attention to so let's take our tools and do the first step of making your very own bruise lee make sure to get some safety goggles and maybe parental supervision if you're a younger uh, craftsman trying to make your own akados let's get to it the first thing we'll be doing is getting rid of this mr split's arm by detaching it from his torso you can probably muscle it out but let's see what it takes and uh go from there just like that luckily the metal pin is actually still inserted here so it's just uh, about maybe sanding this part off we have already, already a hole in here, but maybe drilling this piece out uh, to make it more flat. Secondly, we have to take this arm off of this chucks. This is the one we'll be using to make in our bruise lead. Uh, from the factory, you can notice that his mouth is not really in place, but let's see what we can do. It does have a pin in it, so our goal is to try to detach it uh, from the pin and uh, see what we can do. Okay, so it looks like the, uh, the pin is right there. You just let it drop out. Maybe you just bend it back with pliers and then get it out that way as well. And it should just be able to drop out from the back, the top, but it is bent out of shape. So uh, we can just actually cut this whole arm off as well, but I don't want to damage my uh, my Dremel tool in the process of cutting this, but uh, we'll try to get this out and we can't. I'll show you just how just to chop this whole piece off. So now we have our two pieces. We're gonna try and combine this with a torso of it. I really just cut off and uh, once done, our final product will look something similar to this. Uh, quite flush, uh, so then we can just attach the arm. And this pin is actually the split strike pin that goes through here. So we're trying to make sure that it stays in place. But let's show some techniques about how to make sure we sand this down to make it all nice and smooth so that our bruisley doesn't have an alien arm. Our Dremel kit comes with this little sanding tool here. It's a cone shape to make sure that you get the specific angles and not just a, a quite a big cylinder. So we use this to sand down our Mr. Split's arm to get rid of the bumps and see how we can contour to make it look like a human arm. Power's off, then you put the power source in, and let's get started. Once complete, you have an arm that actually looks human, like this. I was also able to bore out the hole here uh, to get rid of the extra peg used to adhere it to the original Mr. Split's torso. And if you don't have those tools like a Dremel, you can always use sandpaper to cut into small strips to get those fine areas. And we also wanted to make sure that we try to sand uh, uh, the arm as well to make sure that uh, we can paint it and it can still go in smoothly into the punching arm recess. So our next step now is to remove the extra uh, shoulder off of Chuck's leg. Uh, we were able to remove the pin just by pushing it out and then we're going to modify and change the tip of our Dremel uh, to be able to cut this piece out. Again, if you don't have this tool, you can always just slowly use a file or sand it up to make it flush to the torso. So let's actually change tips so we can use a cutting wheel that is specifically made to cut plastics. Before we start shaping down this uh, shoulder, one thing we we'll want to be able to do maybe early on is cutting off this bandana so that when we try to sand this down, it doesn't actually interfere. So I have an X-Acto blade here that I'm just going to use to slice off uh, this portion of the bandana. Just take care to watch your fingers. And I just pretty much just slice it off. And of 
course, you can go in and get some finer detail and shave off small pieces at a time. Make sure you're very gently and keep track of where your fingers are. Maybe get an adult to help out as well. If some of you guys just have scissors, um, go ahead and maybe snip off here as well. But because this is not hard plastic and it's actually maybe like a more soft rubberized plastic, uh, using file or sandpaper won't be uh, as useful. But let's now retract our blade and make sure it's safe. And then utilize our cutting tool Dremel now to cut this piece of plastic off. If you want to have a uh, more secure a hold on it, you can also opt to use a controller, but you can just shave it off. And now that this large chunk is gone, uh, how the cutting tool works is it actually cuts through the plastic, but again, uh, since it's rotating, it does heat up quite fast and it actually melts the plastic. So from here, now that the large chunk is gone, we can just do the same thing we did with the Mr. Split's arm and just sand it down and make it flush. So again, you can use sandpaper. I'm gonna opt out to switch out the heads of this Dremel tool so we get that little sanding uh, instrument again. At this point, once you have the, uh, the pieces where you want them, you can just pretty much super glue them in place and make sure you get the right angle for the height uh, so he's punching. If it's too low, he will not be able to engage your opponent and be able to split strike uh, hitting the head. So again, you can just super glue it as we speak right now. I'd like to take an extra step though. Using my Dremel tool or maybe even a fine drill, uh, bore out the centerpiece where the pin is just enough so maybe a screw can go inside. And similarly here, we're gonna expand this little hole here just to be able to do the same thing that we can actually have a screw in here as well. My plan is to screw in a screw into the Mr. Split's arm just enough so it doesn't extend out to the back. And then uh, using the same Dremel tool, but instead of cutting with plastic, we're gonna use a metal cutting disc to be able to cut off the top of the screw. Then, with the recess here, go ahead and rotate it on to screw it in, maybe dab a, a little piece of uh, super glue in there and make sure it's really in there so that you can have aggressive play with this Chuck Slee. So, let's get the screw in and show you what it looks like. And we have a screw here. It looks like it's um, uh, maybe, uh, you know, 330 seconds or it's uh, a third of a quarter inch. And we want to get rid of this uh, small pointy part to be able to just thread it in nicely into the Mr. Split's arm. So again, I have my sandpaper uh, tip on my Dremel. I'm going to shave down just the pointy tip part and make it more flat and still allow it to be able to uh, screw it into the uh, Mr. Split's arm. So that's it. Now we take the Mr. Split's arm and just screw it in place. Make sure you don't uh, overdo it because we want the threads to go in just one way. Screwdriver will work. I'm just gonna just rotate it in with these pliers. sure it's a uh, you don't th uh, see it pulling out the other end as well so you know you're not going too far through but it looks pretty secure now and uh, yeah it's in there pretty good so now that we have this piece in we want to be able to put it into our uh, Chuxley torso so we're just gonna probably uh, shave it off maybe a little bit right here and then sand it down to make it their appropriate height before we just screw it into them, our check sleeve. So let's change the tips of our uh, Dremel tool and let's uh, uh, shave this uh, screw down. 
Now that we've got the piece in and shaved just to be the right depth, we can now just screw it in to this uh, Chuck Z's arm, Chuck's Lee arm. So again, righty tighty like Lucy, we just rotate the arm to be squared into our Chuck Lee body. Slowly screw it in. And as it gets closer, it should meet up with the torso. And then, ready for super gluing. Something like this. Okay. This has a gap here, but you can make some adjustments. Or to some more, but we can also unscrew it now that the threads are in. Put a dab of super glue inside that recess, screw it back on and let it cure so that it's nice and tight. That way we can have aggressive play with this chucks and not worry about the arm ripping off. Let's do it. And there it is. Chucks Lee with the Mr. Splits arm. Looks great. Now it's just time to paint. We actually have an extra coin base here so that in case we wanna make sure we paint the bottoms of the shoes as well to make sure the paint's there, we're able to remove this off the coin base, let it dry, but we stick it onto this platform on a controller and then paint the rest uh, a lot easier. In this fashion, we actually have the trigger on the controller pulled backwards just to give us some more control and not worry about it spinning out while we paint. I'll paint with my right hand because I'm right-handed and this just lets me get really close without moving. You may also opt to have it on the table and rest in your arm and your entire uh, uh, palm so you can actually get finer movement for all the detailed parts. We'll start painting off the pants torso and doing some detail work to make sure that all the emblems are hidden. I actually took some time to actually uh, sand down some of the emblems here, uh, but also on the uh, fist here because when it was molded in the factory, uh, these two pieces created extra plastic that stuck out and we saw a line there. Somewhere the Mr. Splits line right there, so we can clean it up and make it look even more natural. Now, let's paint this uh, Bruce Lee. The colors we're using for this project are flat black and semi-gloss black for the pants and hair, gloss cream for the skin color, uh, metallic red for the slash and blood marks, and of course, gloss white for the whites of the eyes and the teeth. Just five colors to get you this Bruce Lee. And they're all tester brand, uh, pretty much priced around $1.99 per ink bottle. So this entire uh, color scheme or color set will cost you about $10. So we're gonna start off with the flat black to paint the pants and flat meaning that it's not shiny or reflective of light, absorbed most of the light. We wanna make sure that it looks like that because pants and clothes uh, usually don't let light shine off of them. We use the semi-gloss black for the hair, mouth, and the outlines of the eyes. Gloss cream for the skin, and again, gloss white for the whites of the eyes and also the teeth. Let's get to it. And uh, we're using, again, the tester's enamel. And instead of dipping our paintbrush all the way inside and uh, we might get some contamination, this is the regular, the smaller, uh, thin brush here. We're gonna pour a, a desired amount onto this little tray here, almost like a Petri dish, or you can even use a small cup or anything that can let you uh, just hold some paint there. So make sure to shake well, which I've previously done. And now pour some onto this tray, just a desired amount. You can always pour more if you need more. And then uh, use this uh, amount uh, to paint the pants. So always recap it. I might have to clean the bottle a little bit off camera in case it did spill over, but um, we're ready to paint the pants. So, with uh, fine control, you hold one, use the paintbrush for the other, dip it in. It's okay if it's, uh, if it's a little bit runny, because we're going to use, use the extra paint we have on the brush and uh, put on the pants, actually. Maybe even uh, put it over, put it on the controller. Maybe paint the bottoms of the, of the pants as well, of the shoes, so that the one on white shows off. And again, you can use uh, fine layers, because you're always going to maybe let dry and get a second coat on. So, you just do this, color all the pants, and then we move on to different parts of the body, the skin, and make sure you're able to paint over the emblem as well. And again, don't go over too much before this layer dries because when you do, you might wipe off that paint that you put on and you'll be able to see the emblem and uh, imperfections of the paint job. So it's a light layer across all the sections of the pants. 
or even paint part of the pants that you don't, uh, you want to cover parts and then just leave the rest because Chuck's sleeve does come with black pants already. So it's up to you. If you're satisfied uh, with your paint job, just covering up different white parts in the emblem, you can just leave the pants as is and it'll make your painting job a lot easier and simpler without having to go over all the black areas. You can move directly after painting his shoes and sneakers onto the skin. Let me just finish this up and move directly onto the Chuck Slee skin then. So we were able to paint the bottoms of the shoes as well as the pants, the red bandana off the hair, as well as the eyes and the black uh, out mouth as well. Don't worry about uh, spilling over to areas that are outside these uh, uh, specific parts because we can always paint over it to cover up any of these uh, minor uh, uh, coloring outside the lines as it were. So all we got to do is set this to lay out dry before we put on a second layer if you wish or if you're satisfied you can then move on to coloring the skin and then work on the finer details including painting the inside of the arm which you can or you don't have to do if you want to leave this able to smooth but this is probably the more one of the more delicate parts to paint and definitely maybe create a rig where you can actually let it dry like this so that the wet paint on the shaft of the punching arm doesn't get uh, all uh, crudded up uh, when it dries and it starts shifting back and forth. That's how I actually painted the first couple of them. I just hung it upside down by a wire, uh, maybe over a, a clothes hanger or something, but you can let it dry like that. So we're gonna let this dry and then start painting on the skin. You will see what it looks like uh, with just skin, uh, coloring uh, the entire torso, arm, and uh, the shirt as well. Let's get to it. One of the harder things to do is to make sure to only paint enough to cover a light layer. Remember, we can always go back and add a second layer to make it deeper. We do not want to cake on too much paint just to be able to cover up uh, uh, the t-shirt and, and the color of Mr. Split's arm right away. Do layer by layer until it becomes opaque and you can't see any of the blue or the emblems on Chuck Slee's shirt. So again, one layer at a time, do it lightly so that all the musculatures like his, uh, his pecs can still come on through. Make sure to also color in the arm hole as well, as well as the elbows to make sure that you get rid of his, uh, his wrist, uh, wrist pad things as well. We also want to cover up a uh, color of the face to make sure it matches the same tone because the, uh, the gloss peach that we have or the cream that we use is not the same tone that it comes to fault on the uh, Kato fighters. So, we're going to paint again after it dries and really make the skin tone come out. It should be able to cover up all the blue from Mr. Split's arm as well as the emblem. So let's see what it looks like after the skin's painted on. Some of the video footage became corrupt in the process of making the Bruce Lee. Only thing that you missed was that we had some extra layers of skin uh, gloss cream and then painted the mouth opaque with that gloss black. Waited for it to dry then painted the white of the teeth and the white eyes as well. We then also touched up the hair by using gloss black to cover up the bandana red. And once dried, add as many layers as you need to, to make sure that everything looks good. And then finish it off with the Rust-Oleum Aerosol Clear Coat. Now make sure to paint and uh, use these sprays in a well-ventilated area. And then we added a new coin base to this uh, Chuck's Lee as well, a uh, Bruce Lee to make him a customized character. So, how can you get this uh, uh, customized Bruce Lee for yourself? Well, let's set a goal. We're really closely approaching uh, 1,500 subscribers, and once we reach that, uh, that mark, we're going to do a randomizer for the comments uh, for this video. So, a random commenter might be able to get this very own Chuck Slee. Currently, I'm going to maybe restrict it to the continental U.S. I know that we have some international Cato fans here, but we'll have to work out the shipping fees to see if it's feasible. Uh, but uh, further details will be in the description below. Well, you saw it here. How to make your very own Bruce Lee custom Cato fighter. Leave a comment about what you think will be the, uh, the best way to make your own custom fighters and what ideas you have of putting the two Akito's uh, figures together. And in an upcoming episode, we have a special surprise directly from Moose Toy themselves. We received a care package from Moose Toys directly to me with some extra Akito goodies from series uh, one and series three. We'll do an unboxing and a review of some of the classic items from the Akito toy line. 
So stay tuned for that. So remember, stay true to yourselves and make sure to keep hunting down those Akados. I'll see you next time.